Hello again, fellow reef and marine aquarium lovers. Welcome back to Craft Aquatic. I'm Matt G. There is nothing quite like a marine aquarium full of beautiful reef fish peacefully coexisting, as you can clearly see here in this footage of this big, gorgeous reef display at House of Fins. Or you may have your heart set on a fish-only display with some of the marine species you have always wanted but don't dare to keep in your reef. With that said, today we will be discussing 12 unique marine fish and whether they are reef safe or not, and perhaps even prepare you with some analytical tools you can utilize for future purchase decisions. If you like this video, there are dozens more to check out. Just head over to the Craft Aquatic channel, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Alright, let's check out some fish. When it comes to selecting fish, no selection is safe if the fish you are choosing is not completely healthy. You may choose to quarantine, treat, or add your fish directly to your setup, but if you see anything out of the ordinary, just pass. Strange spots, discoloration, drooping fins, heavy breathing, fish not eating, misplaced scales, fish exhibiting stress such as hiding in a cave or corner. If you see any of this, just straight up consider this fish is not safe for your aquarium. When adding new fish to a display, whatever you choose has to have everything going for it, or its chances of surviving the transition from the store to your home setup will be severely reduced. All of the fish in this video have come from different local fish stores, so I can show you a broad and interesting mix of types and varieties. First up we have the Golden Trevally or Golden Kingfish. I always stop to admire their unique oblong bodies, opaque yellow gold color, and overall uncommon appearance. Like many juvenile fish, you can't expect the young of the species to maintain their coloration. In fact, this fish is considered a game fish and will not only shift to a silvery color as it ages, but will grow to be 3 to 4 feet in length. The Golden Trevally is distributed widely through the Indian and Pacific Oceans, and is a pelagic species. This means that it lives out in the open water rather than near the bottom or in and around a reef. With that said, duplicating this sort of environment in a home reef aquarium would be nearly impossible. Just be aware if you are considering adding one to your fish-only setup. I'd be amiss if I failed to mention the ubiquitous clown triggerfish in a video about unique marine species. The clown triggerfish hails from the subtropical waters of the Indian Ocean and West Pacific and is most commonly found foraging for urchins and small invertebrates along the external reef slopes. These triggers are reclusive and timid when small, but become very aggressive when they reach 5 to 6 inches. In the reef aquarium, they will seek out and eat invertebrates. They don't typically bother coral until they do. There are reports of clown triggers completely ignoring coral for many years and seemingly out of nowhere deciding expensive coral and fish are on the menu. This fish can be considered a candidate for a fish-only marine aquarium of 120 gallons or bigger, housing large tank mates. Next up we have the fox face rabbit fish. The fox face is found mainly in the tropical western Pacific and tends to make its home in reefs and lagoons. Though not an obligate herbivore, fox face will absolutely go to town on nuisance algae in your display, sometimes even the stubborn stuff like Braxis and bubble algae. A fox face is peaceful and personable when not housed with other rabbit fish. It is well known that all rabbit fish dorsal spines are venomous, though they pose more of a threat to careless human hand than a fellow tank mate. You'll want to exercise caution when working in your tank, but if you do get jabbed, hot water can do wonders to help alleviate the pain. These fish are a gregarious personality and are great for drawing more timid fish out into the open water column. Growing to a max size of 9 inches, this is a perfect reef and community fish when housed in a tank of 120 gallons or larger. Here we have a young panther grouper with its beautiful black spots and pearly white body. Panther groupers are also referred to as humpback groupers due to the fact it grows into an interesting laterally compressed, relatively tall shape as it gets older. The panther grouper hails from the western pacific and tends to hang around in the reef searching for small fish and crustaceans, which make up a large part of its diet. In southeast Asia, the panther grouper is highly valued as food and has been overexploited. Fortunately, they are now bred in several aquaculture facilities. The panther grouper is an ambush predator that will consume any fish it can fit in its mouth. As it grows larger, up to 28 inches, so should its tank mates. Due to its large adult size, this fish should be housed in a fish-only display of 300 gallons or larger. 
If you mistook this fish for another grouper, you're probably not alone. This is a spotted sweet lips, also known as a clown sweet lips, and is also often mistaken for a clown fish. It'd be wise not to make that mistake, as this little beauty will grow to a whopping 28 inches and become a ravenous carnivore. As a juvenile in captivity, which this one is, it will most often starve to death due to its heavy grazing requirements, and is very sensitive to aggressive tank baits, which is why this is an expert fish only. The juveniles swim with their head pointed down in an elliptical pattern which looks like a clownfish to mimic a poisonous flatworm to keep predators at bay. If you choose to keep a spotted sweet lips, be prepared to house it in a 300 gallon or larger tank with plenty of live rock and big non-aggressive community fish. Here we have another fish that is often mistaken for something else. This is a heniochus, often referred to as a banner fish. If you are familiar with the look of a Moorish idol, you can see why these are often confused with that species. Fortunately, they are not related and a much easier fish to maintain in a marine aquarium. They do, however, require a long acclimation, but if done correctly, will make for a peaceful community fish for your fish-only display. There are hobbyists that have added a heniochus to their reef display, but they will eventually predate on soft and stony coral polyps, so best not to attempt unless the coral are meant to be food. A heniochus will grow to 8.5 inches in captivity and should be kept in a 100 gallon or larger fish only aquarium. This cute little guy is a royal grandma that is being drip acclimated and waiting patiently to be added to the rack and rubble frag tank. I'm taking a quick detour here to talk briefly about one thing you can do to prepare your tank for a new fish, especially when introducing a small fish to a tank with a variety of large established tank baits. In the back of its new home, I have placed a new rock that has not yet been inhabited by any other fish. This is actually a man-made chunk of dry reef rock specifically designed to be a fish hotel. You can see all the nooks and crannies that are perfect place for a new fish to escape to and feel safe while sussing out its new home. I'll add a link to a few similar products in the description below. I've had great luck using this method of introducing new fish to community aquariums, often simply building a fish hotel with chunks of live rock and super glue. It goes a long way to reduce overall stress for fish residents new and old. Here's an interesting one, the dragon face pipefish. These can be found in Indonesia, Fiji, and the Maldives. The dragon face pipefish comes in a variety of patterns. No two are alike. There are up to 12 subspecies due to regional variations. And in the aquarium, this fish will feed mainly in copepods, so will require a mature aquarium to thrive. They are also known to seek out and consume acropora red bugs if the afflicted corals in an area or flow isn't too intense. Dragon face pipefish are a good candidate for an established reef aquarium 75 gallons or larger. Here's an iconic fish that most of us will easily recognize. The volatin or red lionfish is native to the Indo-Pacific but has become an invasive species with no known predators in the Caribbean Sea. Here's an example of understanding the responsibility we have as marine aquarists, as this fish was introduced as an invasive species by aquarists around 1985. If you're interested in keeping one, they are beautiful fish that make excellent pets in a fish-only or reef system, so long as you're aware of several caveats of housing them. They will readily eat any fish or invertebrate that will fit in their mouths, and the poisonous spines pack a painful sting. The volatile lionfish will grow up to 18.5 inches in captivity, recommended tank size 120 gallons or larger. We've made it to my favorite fish in this video. This is a dusky jawfish native to the Western Atlantic. The thick mottled body and inquisitive face with pupils that change from deep red to turquoise, depending on light conditions, totally does it for me. This is an awesome fish full of personality for a reef or fish only aquarium with non-aggressive tank mates. They are supposed to grow to a maximum size of five inches, but this one is easily seven, by far the largest dusky jawfish I have ever seen. If you're going to keep one, you will need to prepare your reef for some shenanigans as this fish will grab whatever loose coral, snail, or rubble they see fit to adorn the entrance of their burrows. They will dart out of their dens to grab most any food that is floating by and will do perfectly fine housed in a reef tank of 30 gallons or more. This is the second sweet lips in this video, a very different looking juvenile to the spotted sweet lips we featured earlier. This is the oriental sweet lips found in the Indian Ocean, Australia, Indonesia, and Western Pacific. In the wild, the oriental sweet lips inhabits offshore rocky reefs and is relatively docile, but will go stir crazy even as a juvenile in a tank that is undersized. As a full grown adult, this fish will reach 23 inches, but requires a large amount of swimming space to stay happy, which is why a 500 US 
U.S. gallon aquarium or larger is recommended. As with most fish, the color will change as it matures, but remains very attractive in appearance. This fish should be kept in a fish-only tank with live rock with plenty of aeration and at least three protein-heavy feedings per day. Like most large marine fish in this video, use caution when sizing up its tank mates. The Aptasia eating filefish comes from Sri Lanka, Indonesia, and the Philippines, and may very well be the most useful fish in this video. The reason is in the name. In nature, the Aptasia eating filefish is found in rubble heavy reefs and areas with seagrass anywhere from 7 to 50 feet and feeds on amphipods and bristle worms, which most reef aquarists don't even consider when adding one to their reef. This fish should be kept closely monitored in a reef aquarium. Once it has finished off the Aptasia and any bristle worms it can reach, it can easily target your coral especially if it's not taken to your regular feedings. I've actually experienced having one myself that took a liking to xanthids, so use extreme caution. What file fish lack in color they easily make up for in personality. With their chameleon-like eyes inquisitively scanning the reef, a definite favorite for visiting guests, you can keep this fish in marine systems with plenty of live rock 30 gallons or larger. Last but certainly not least, we have one of the most curiously bizarre fish in the list, the angler or frogfish. Frogfish live in nearly every region of the world's oceans and have the peculiar skill of using a modified dorsal fin as a fishing rod to lure an unsuspecting meal. The variations in the species are vast, but most will grow up to 7 inches, have a globulous, extensible body, soft skin, and a gaping mouth which allows them to consume fish up to their own body size. The dermal spinules all over their skin are very very sensitive to potential prey passing by, which allows them to sit nearly undetected while in wait for a passing meal. Another interesting aspect are the pectoral fins, which are angled and shaped like feet to assist in moving slowly along the substrate. You'd think this would make for one of the hobby's most interesting fish, but many quares who are successful at keeping frogfish report becoming extremely bored with their pet, due to the fact they rarely move and fare best in a species-specific tank. With that said, it is not uncommon for frogfish to die suddenly in captivity, likely due to specific feeding requirements not being met. All said, it is possible to keep one in a reef tank, but will fare best in its own aquarium of at least 20 gallons or more. As you can see, there are all types and varieties of fish for sale that may not be suitable for your setup, and many strange and interesting fish you'd think might not be, but actually are. I've presented some information here, but the only true safe method when it comes to choosing tank mates is to research each fish before adding it to your fish only or reef setup. It's actually quite easy to do, as information about most commonly available saltwater fish is readily available from a variety of resources. At the very least, make sure to do a search on your phone before before heading home with a potentially regrettable purchase. If it is a fish you do not recognize or can't easily look up in, the LFS can't tell you exactly what it is, just do yourself a favor and treat it like it is not a reef or community safe fish. It will either be your reef, your existing fish, or the newly purchased fish that suffers when it comes to the lack of information. If you appreciate this video and the information I have shared here, there are two more fish related videos I'll post in the description below. Check them out. You can support Craft Aquatic by subscribing, hitting the thumbs up, and leaving a comment below. We are also on Instagram, Craft Aquatic, no spaces if you are on there. Thanks for checking it out, and I'll see you in the next one.